I want to go back one step because we, I do want to get into context, but I do want to go back one step and, and sort of ask you, so attention is hot. Like everybody's talking about it. Everybody's like, yes, attention. You, do, you, do you actually want to plan by or, or measure based on attention? And if, and, and if so, what is stopping you from doing that? So I'm actually going to say that attention, I feel, is on a hype cycle. Yes. So I think it was super hot in 2021. Mm -hmm. And it is not the word that's been talked about quite as much this year, um, but it should be. Uh, and I think it will continue to be, but it's on a natural, um, almost a wavering down as teams seek to operationalize it, which gets us to the second part of your question. So what are we seeking to do? We have enough information for, from the testing we've been doing, uh, certainly in, intense testing over the last four years, but I actually did a little bit of research into when we had started, and it was kind of the first test was in 2016 in the Nordics. We have enough to do a lot around planning and activation. Where it gets uh, more time is needed is to actually trade upon it across all channels. Um, and that's based on panel size and the confidence with which you can say it's connected to outcomes. So one of the things that Monique brought up that I thought was really interesting was, was that there's this ability to give a seller to, to better value a media owner's content based on attention versus I think in some cases, some of the media owners that I've spoken to are like, look, we don't want that. That's not, that's not our realm. How do, how, does, how do you think about that? Do you, is there an advantage from the media owners and in your eyes if they can show that their content might captivate a user more? Yes. Yeah. Hundred percent. Mm -hmm. I think I think what attention understanding does when people commit to it is to go, what does this mean for the broader ecosystem? And how do you ensure that you're crafting better experiences? Right? That was always our intention around the understanding and the scaling of attention was to say, what is the responsibility that you have to craft more meaningful, more effective, more creative, more inclusive experiences? Mm -hmm. Um, and, how, and how do you do that? And so I would say every, every platform, every partner should consider how they might go about doing that. Uh, and it, it, it should be an advantage to them. It just is hard work. But maybe one more question on that vein is, is it not the advertiser's ads job to, to capture the user's attention more than the content it, that it's situated in? There is an equal responsibility. Cool. So it, it, is, it is important for you to understand the role that your brand plays in someone's life mm -hmm. and ensure that the content that you are developing, it is representative of the audiences that you seek to connect with, right? That the brand is showing up in a way that is meaningful, right? So that's the, the developer of that content. And then from a context perspective, is it in the right place? But have you also, as a planner, done enough around your frequency? So that's your contact, mm -hmm. right? Have you considered the latest signals around your comms imperative? So your drivers of choice. And to Monique's point, what are you thinking about? When you say culture, mm -hmm. how, how can we define that more, more accurately? Or is it simply a version of context? Mm -hmm. So that, that's... That was my perfect segue. So for, for both of you, I know there's this kind of interplay between attention and context and culture. How are you, how are you starting to see that play out? Um, Monique, for you first. Sure, so um, we like to say that Google knows what you search for, Facebook knows what you like, and Teeds knows what you read. And um, with that, we believe that we can understand a lot about users and about trends and we think that contextual signals can be a way to understand um, certainly what has happened and what we want to build toward is to understand what will happen in a more predictive way um, to help brands surround themselves with the right type of content that matters from a cultural standpoint for the brand building efforts that they're trying to make. And we believe if we do that effectively, we'll capture more attention, mm -hmm. which can be measured and maybe transacted on at, the, at some point, which will drive the business outcomes that, that matters to the marketer at the end of the day. And Chrissy, you kind of brought up this idea of culture. It's hard enough to measure attention, theoretically, based on sort of which, which metric, apparently for some, for some agencies, it's hard to quantify reach at this point. How do, we, how do you add the lens of culture into the mix and what, what benchmarks would you use to measure that? So if you walk around the Palais and you look at the work, 
the work that wins is the work that connects to, resonates, or is reflected by culture. The word itself is hugely interesting and powerful, and the, the short answer is we're figuring it out, right? Because I, the old the strategist that's still inside me goes, is it, is it just context? I, d I don't think it is, but do we need to get to a clarity of language that says within the, the signals that are possible, whether that is increasingly around emotion, implicit right response, memory, so and so forth, what else is there that could get to that? It is a question I have posed to my team and said, I would like you to work with ABC and go and figure this out, right? These examples, right? So um, I will, maybe that's what we do next year, right? On this panel, and I'll give you the answer. Yeah. But we'll have results. Yes, we will do. <laughs> this yeah. time next year. But Monique, I, I mean, I think then to kind of bring this more into the practical realm, so you've got context and you can measure that on some levels, particularly in video. And then you have attention, which we can measure sort of with various various sort of platforms and ways. And then you wrap in culture. How do you how do you smush all of that together into a CTV campaign? Like and can you do that in can you do that in the Teeds platform right now? So work in progress, Tamika. <laughs> <laughs> That's the vision. Right. Yeah. That that is the vision. Because um, we think if we can get that right, and especially attach it, first of all, leverage video, right. sight, sound, emotion, creative, storytelling, all the things we know we can do with that, um, which is important when you're thinking about um, brand building within cultural moments. And to bring that to the, the big screen, um, that's the ambition, and, and that's what we were we are partnering with people like OMD on to, to build toward that together. And maybe one question off the script is, is there a cultural moment that either of you, like if, if an advertiser came to you and was like, yes, I totally want to be in that, or, or you know, that you'd be excited about to, to sort of create a campaign or an experience around? For me, it's, it's a client saying, I want to just crack that. Mm. Not, not not giving me a specific event, date, calendar moment, because that's almost a little bit expected. Mm -hmm. I want to go higher in the question and go, what does this mean for you? Because I think that will take us into a more, uh, I hope, interesting space that says, it's this, that's how we get here. And Monique, what's the, what's the experience that Christy's going to come to you and say, we totally want to do this? And you're like, OK, yes, we will, we will sort of retool our platform and or, or devote resources to kind of helping to make this experience come to life. We, we do that for Christy. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Already. Uh, but it, it, I think uh, to Christy's point, it's taking it a level higher, which is you want to understand what audiences they are trying to connect with mm -hmm. um, through cultural moments and then helping connect the dots with the power of the technology that we have to make it happen for them at the end of the day. And uh, while we're working toward this, for, for sure, some of the early data that we've seen in terms of the, the contextual typed uh, signals that are popping the most are the ones that are actually culture drivers. So we look at things like um, travel and art and food and, and sport. Those are the things that pop the most on attention type metrics. So you can start to triangulate how they all sort of will work together in a more meaningful, effective way. If we use the technology to harness it effectively, but also simplify it as much as possible to drive towards what matters to, to our clients. My last question, Andy's like, wrap it up. My last question is, we're here at Cannes, so we'd be remiss, we're talking about signals and attention, and yeah, but we'd be remiss to not talk about creativity. How, how do all of these signals actually <coughs> affect the campaign creative, or are we just gonna get to a point where it's an AI-generated creative and we use attention and context and sort of the, the, time of, the time that this campaign is going into market to sort of create something new? I think, I think the work that we're doing makes our teams more informed and therefore braver to, to create content that actually works better than before. We've done the most number of um, 
campaigns that have been part of the TEED's attention program of any, of any holding company at 196 across, I think, 26 different markets. And if you look at the performance of them, I think it's 18% higher than benchmark. That's because of the work we do together, which actually makes the work better, right? So, yes, I do see a future where teams are using the latest capabilities in generative AI to make it even sharper, um, but, but with confidence, right, of and partnership and saying this is how we are taking risks, but in a really confident and safe way. Yeah, and, and for us, we, we don't create the advertising. Um, what we do is provide technology and data signals and insights to help optimize it for uh, the outcome that they're looking for and for the, the channel that they're on. So the more, the more data signals we have to do that effectively, leveraging things like AI more effectively, the better we can, we can serve our clients.